Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that you guys have had a great week. And by that I mean that you can see noted progress. You may not have gotten to the point that you desire to be or that you plan to be that represents your goal for the week or your goal for the month or whatever uh, the case may be. But can you look and see noted progress? That's the important thing. Uh, you're not going to always hit your goal when you want to. Take it from someone who knows. Uh, it's about progress. It's about doing something that moves you closer to your ultimate goal. And sometimes those steps that you're taking aren't as uh, broad or, or wide as you want them to be. Your gait isn't as wide as you want them to be and your pace isn't as rapid as you want to be. Uh, but the goal is to keep moving. So keep that in mind. Again, uh, before I move on, as again, something I want to address, I addressed it in an earlier video. <clears throat> For those of you who are um, concerned about the fact that I am uploading or even streaming uh, a lot of content that is associated with another area of my life, which is personal uh, development uh, and uh, personal uh, development, human behavior uh, and things of that nature uh, on the channel that is dedicated to being a voice for black people. Uh, I want to remind you that being black should not be synonymous with suffering. Being black shouldn't be synonymous with oppression. Should it be understood that we have encountered uh, some pretty horrible, horrible things, but it should not be what defines us. It should not be what establishes how we move and how we operate. In other words, what I'm trying to say is in order to be the best we be, we can be, we have to address the psychology of success, the psychology and the practices and behaviors that lead to leading better lives as individuals. And that's what this is about. It's about sharing content that sort of uh, offsets a lot of the trauma porn that is constantly being shoved down our throats. And I'm about to get ready to talk about some pretty horrible stuff. And so, you know, I'm talking, but when I talk about anything, it's not for the sake of harping on something, it's for the sake of pointing out something that has to be addressed. And I think we have to address the negative stuff that we're dealing with, especially when a lot of it is self-induced. I think that, that that's absolutely imperative. But what you can't do is hop on it to where it starts to become all there is because then you immerse yourself in it. And when you immerse yourself into the negative, you immerse yourself into a pattern of suffering. And so with that being said, that is why I have started to put so much positive material. Uh, and it's, it's, it's for the purpose of literally showing you what you can do to improve your situation. Uh, it's also to encourage people who are really striving to do some things in their lives that are meeting some um, opposition. That's what it's about. Uh, there's a th there's more to life than just being a black person going through. Uh, that's the most horrid, horrid uh, identity. You know, I'm that suffering black person. I just want to talk about all the shit that black people go through and never ever look at the possibilities of who we can be and celebrate some of the awesome things that black people have done and are doing and will do. Uh, so that's what that is, you know. So uh, those of you who are concerned, that's not going to stop. Uh, will this continue to be a voice for black people? Yeah, but black people can be successful too. So that's that. Now on to something that, again, I'm passionate about. We talk a lot about, and this is a theme, so you get ready. That, this is probably going to be a theme right now because what I'm seeing concerns me. Um, we talk about uh, our children being our future. We talk about how precious our children are. If, if as individual parents, something were to happen to one of our kids, we're going hell, to hell and back. 
to, to, to uh, protect them, to fight for them, you know, even get locked up for them. Uh, but when it comes down to this thing on a collective level, we've left them exposed. We have, in a systematic way, exposed our children to their detriment, to their harm, uh, to a finite desperation because we are not protecting them. We're not protecting them uh, in ways that I pointed out in recent videos, you know, academically, socially, um, uh, developmentally. But here's the thing that, that's really bothering me right now. There's a level of violence that's taking a place amongst our youth. And when I say youth, I mean everyone under the age of 21. And when I look at, and you know, some, some carry that youth thing up into young adulthood to almost 26 or 27, but I'm talking about anyone under 21. Uh, which to me constitutes those that are still under our authority and should be still under our care in some way or another as we liberate them and prepare them and move them out. Um, and here, so here, here, here we are. And just in the past week, I've gotten stuff that crumbs across my desk. Some of it is flowing across social media. It's so hot. A uh, young girl, I believe, in Georgia shot mother rush, tries to rush her to the hospital ends up stopping at a gas station uh, where the young girl eventually dies. Most people think she actually was shot there because to find out she was shot at home. Uh, initially, it was thought that a 19-year-old and a minor uh, were, were trying to uh, rob the home and in the process shot her. Later, turns out that it was her 13-year-old brother who, were trying, who was trying to stop the 19-year-old and the other person from coming into the house and robbing them uh, and ends up shooting his sister and ultimately killing her. Uh, but that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is the reason that those two were there to rob them is the 13 year old was literally ordering parts off the internet and making guns, untraceable, what they call ghost guns. Guns that don't have serial numbers that literally made from scratch that can't be traceable by way of serial number or sale. And he was literally selling it on the streets. A 13 year old, uh, which explains why the mom didn't call the paramedics to come to the house and try to get the girl off the premises and get her help, which may have even led to her demise. I don't want to speculate too far into that, but definitely moving her instead of holding her and putting pressure on the wound and waiting for professional help could have hurt. Uh, that's why, you know, you, you don't do that. but. What I can tell you is a 13-year-old was building semi-automatic weapons, i.e. AR, uh, AR-14s, AR-15s, uh, uh, MR-5, I mean MR-15s, uh, and things like that. Things that are easy to buy parts on. And yes, I know this, but I'm 50-something years old. You can buy these parts uh, legally and without being uh, without a background check or anything. If you buy them in parts, it doesn't constitute a weapon until it's a weapon. And so you can do that. All right. So he's doing that. So he's, he's literally got an arms thing going on at 13 years old. Obviously his mom knew about it, but more importantly, the idea that you got 13 year olds running, I mean, uh, 19 and I'm assuming I think the other kid who they still haven't found yet somewhere 15 to 16 running up on the 13 year old and all this is happening in another instance a 14 year old sitting at a bus stop after school yesterday waiting on the bus to get home from school was shot a total of 18 times and killed 36 shots were fired how much you want to bet they, they, as of last I heard, they hadn't caught the people who shot from the car. But how, how much you want to bet that the people who shot from that car were under under the age of 18 or somewhere around there? Uh, other, or as I put it, classified as youth. How much you want to gamble on that? Uh, down here in Houston, it happened. It's, uh, another kid, again, yesterday. Or was it the day before yesterday? Shot multiple times behind some kind of disagreement over something real stupid. I forgot what it was uh, because so much going through my mind. But I mean, it was real stupid. It's a, it's a, um, but uh, 
any way it goes, we've got this elevated level of internal violence, uh, what you can call fratricide. Um, and, you know, that's black boys killing black boys in the simplest, most specified and narrow term of that word. Basically means brother killing brother, but uh, that's an issue. And it didn't just erupt out of nowhere. It doesn't just happen in a vacuum. And we need to stop talking about it and treating it as if it happened in a vacuum. We need to stop acting as if we did everything we were supposed to do and these kids just all of a sudden got to a point and decided we're killing everything in sight. That's the result of failures on multiple for parts or multiple angles and uh, the lack of fulfillment of responsibility and proper child rearing, proper, proper environment uh, in, in, in protecting and securing an environment where children can be nurtured and developed. We are so easy to trust them to devices, so easy to trust them to an antiquated and broken school system, so easy to trust them to the streets. And, 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 and our excuse is we have to work. Well, we're going to have to find a way to be more than just working because it's not like our working is producing this exorbitant amount of wealth. We're still in last place in that area in case you haven't figured that out. So, you know, it's not like, okay, we're sacrificing something else for something we feel will eventually put us in a position for power. Well, the truth of the matter is the best chance we have for power at this time is the generation that's coming up. Unfortunately, we'll got them killing each other. And it's not just boys killing boys. Now, it's little girls dying too. I mean, it, it nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. I still don't know the whole story about it. Uh, but we got an 81-year-old woman of a uh, famed record label, uh, well, famed music executive killed at two o'clock in the morning sounds fishy as hell but you know that is almost certain some young person you know uh and then just look at the violence i don't know but houston is crazy but i know where the little 14 year old kid got killed in philly the murder count in philly as of right now well at the time i read this was 508 murders Philadelphia 508 murders that's the highest it's been since 1990 that's what 31 years 31 years wow and we pretend we are flabbergasted no we don't want to invest what it takes. Flabbergasted would mean that we're just plain overwhelmed and outdone. We don't have an answer for it. It's too big for us to just, nothing we can do. Oh, we can do something. I told you what we could do years ago. I told you if we don't start socializing these young boys on a na national universal level, teaching them who they are, teaching them what to expect from themselves before others start to do it, we were going to have this problem. I told you we were going to be here. Nobody wanted to listen. Just another old man yakking. Even when I was younger, just do just another, you know, all kind of insults, you know. Things you thought should be an insult that weren't an insult to me. Oh, that old hotel BS and, you know, and that old Pan-African BS and all that old uh, John Henry Clark wannabe BS and all the, the Dr. Amos wannabe you know, and, and I, I got it all. And my whole thing is, you're not insulting me with any of that. You know, if my aspirations are, is to get as close to or to exceed Dr. Amos or Dr. John Henry Clark, that's my goal, to sit up and take the torch and do everything I can with it, with, you know, with no diminishment and force, just trying to do it the best I can in my way, not be them. They are them. Nobody can be them. But to be the best I can be me and do the best I can, I think I've done a pretty damn job, first of all. Second of all, I would rather be aspiring to that to be an aspiring to what a lot of these kids are aspiring to now. They're aspiring to be the next Pookie. 
the, ne the next thing. And you know what I mean by that. I don't mean the stereotype, but you know exactly what I mean when I say it. That's their hero. The neighborhood drug lord. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the dude on the street. I'm talking about the dude that everybody knows about. That's keeping the neighborhood laced with that stuff. But nobody won't say anything. Either they're benefiting from it or they're afraid of it. Or they won't, they won't take, it, take any action. And I get it. You know, when you got that kind of stuff going on in your hood. But the thing is, that came from somewhere. We gave them the chance to literally take up root in what was supposed to be our haven. We did that. We turned our communities into simple neighborhoods that ultimately became violent hoods. I mean, we went from community to neighborhoods. And then the neighborhood disappeared about 10 years ago. 10, 15, it completely disappeared. It's just a hood. Now, there, there's no neighbor neighborhood or neighbor like environment i grew up in a neighborhood that was coming out of communityism it was still a community but it was still a neighborhood and what what that, what does that mean that means that neighbors looked out for neighbors they were neighborly the, I, i'll tell you right now how many people that watch this video can actually sit up and effectively well let's say i'll tell you that how many people can sit up right now and name 20 people who live in their neighborhood when we grew up we can name everybody in the neighborhood everybody and the, but then again that was a time when there wasn't so much this forced displacement the gentrification of our inner cities hadn't started taking place yet. White flight was still in progress. They were running from where we were moving into. So uh, you had people who were living in those houses 15, 20, 25 years. You have a new person move in every now and then, but if it, everybody would get to know them immediately because they were new. So even the new people were known because people say, man, somebody new over there. Somebody's going over and introduce themselves. Everybody's getting together before you know it. Everybody knows who they are. That's to totally gone. Name 20 people in your neighborhood. And the fact is, if you're halfway fluid, if you got a little paper, you ain't even in the black neighborhood anymore. Got the hell up out of there because you understood what was coming. It was easier to get away from it than it was to put in the work. I get that. But the problem is, our future is in there. That's the problem. Our future is in that community, in that former community, that former neighborhood, that, that, that place of distress is where our future lies. We got to go in. We're going to have to go in and we're going to have to literally sit up and take it. I told you what we were going to have to do. When I created black man lead I told you that didn't come because hey man I just want to sit around pick up a rite of passage no I put years of study into African American adolescent and young adult male violence I did it to the point I not only knew what was causing it I could interview a kid and predict their proclivity to be violence I could also predict a, an, an upcoming episode I could talk to a kid if I had access to them and know how close they were to going off the edge that's how much work I put into it. This isn't some joke for me. This is my life. If you get to these kids in time, there's still hope. If you sit up and you uh, think that they're going to self-correct, they're not. That's on us. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to back off and I'm going to leave it there. We have work to do. It's that simple. Uh, on that note, as I get off, those of you who believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, here's a chance for you to show some love and contribute uh, to some of the projects we're going on. And we got several projects going on. One is Black Man Lead. Another is Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Daughters, working with the, uh, uh, at-risk female youth and young adults. Uh, the Black Empowerment Initiative, which is dealing with all types of issues within the Black community. And, and I say community, I don't mean just hood, I mean within the Black collective. 
and that goes from everything from our mental health initiative we, we've, we've created and uh, we're pushing very hard to provide for. As a matter of fact, through my company, the Vision X Institute, we are offering uh, reduced rate mental health uh, services throughout the remainder of the year because we know that uh, depression tends to escalate during the holidays. Just a bunch of things going on. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, you can start by contributing, but you can also reach out for the people who have ha actually reached out over the last couple of days. Thank you so much. We still have work to do. On that note, I'm out of here.